Saturdays were Diana's favorite day, but not for the reason most people dwelt within. For them, Saturday was the seventh day of the week, a day of rest. For Diana, their rest meant her commute to work was a pleasant drive, taking half the time, and the morning was slow until people woke up and pretended to be alive. People do not live, they exist. To live is to create and contribute to improving the self and the world. It was fitting that a messenger of time, closely associated with the tolling of a distant bell, would make an appearance on Saturday morning at sunrise to remind Diana of her work as a shaman. Dawn and dusk, traditional between times of mundane reality, where magic and limitless possibility existed beyond the expected rigmarole, the mold of day or night, two chunks of time, the majority of time, where humanity did people things. In the moments of dawn and dusk, however, people things had the potential to be transformed into magic, otherworldly moments of time, where the reality was a lot more indistinct if one so chose to see the alternatives in dreams. Brilliant orange shone along the eastern mountains. The sun was about to make its appearance after preempting its arrival for the hour of dawn, where the eastern sky gradually lightened, chasing away the dark to the west. But at this moment, not even the western darkness remained as the entire sky glowed in anticipation of a sudden changing of the guard. In the real early morning, with the sun slowly rising, I was walking out slowly, wandering free, when out in the distance, over the valley, I saw an old friend waiting, waiting for me. Jacob Collier's song commanded her thoughts, and her soul felt the pangs of true, unabashed, unadulterated worship of God and his creation.